come together around the word of God and to, to hear what the Lord would say unto us tonight. Uh, you know, we've been doing a series on identity to destiny. And tonight we want to continue with that uh, series uh, by talking and discussing uh, about redefining uh, our identity through relationships and how important those <laughs> godly relationships are uh, that are around us and that we're connected to individuals uh, that will propel us forward uh, into our, our destiny. Um, glad to have Christina with us from Texas and little Luna. Um, and uh, little Luna, uh, you'll be getting something from Sister Sherry on Tuesday. Uh, praise the name of Jesus. I had a vision of, of little Luna um, this morning and, um, and I saw her uh, blowing the shofar and the Holy Spirit spoke to me and said that she was summoning uh, the angels. And so I, she's going to be getting a little shofar on Tuesday and you teach her how to use it, please. Okay. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Uh, praise the name of Jesus. And so we, uh, we, again, we thank all of you for joining us. There'll be others that, that come on board. Uh, but as we talk about uh, redefining our, our destiny and our identity, it's so important to know who we are in Christ Jesus. And that, that uh, pushes us forward into our purpose so that we can be doing the kingdom work uh, every single day of our life. Uh, you know, no time should be wasted. Uh, that's one of the things the Lord has spoken to me recently, that we're not to waste our money. We're not to waste our time. We're not to waste our energy and efforts, but that we are be, to be strategic in all of those different areas. Um, on Wednesday, September the 22nd, the Holy Spirit spoke to Freddie and I and said that we had entered into a season of impartation. And, and so this is, uh, uh, tonight is, is, this is part of that session tonight. So I'm going to, uh, it's so good to see John and Nalco from Tennessee uh, joining us, uh, Lucy from Washington, D.C. Uh, it's so good to see your face tonight. And, uh, and so I'm going to turn it over to Brother Fred and let him uh, begin tonight. The title of the message tonight is Refining Your Identity <laughs> Through Relationships. Relationships are very important. Uh, I, I, you're identity is the gateway to your purpose and authority. A lot of people want purpose and they want authority, but they don't understand who they are or what God says about them. Uh, and so uh, you must first understand identity, who you are, uh, before you will be able to operate with authority uh, and great authority and to fulfill the purpose that God has, has for you. God has great things for each person here tonight. I, I know that. Um, and part of finding your identity is important. And you can refine your identity through the, who, the people you decide and choose to relate to. In uh, October the 22nd, 2008, the Lord said to redefine uh, your identity. So uh, it can go very basic, uh, redefining. That's what he told us. That's what he told us in October the 22nd, uh, 2000. 19, I mean, 2008. Redefine your identity. And uh, it's always possible to refine your identity through encounters of the Lord, Encounter, having, having encounters with the Lord and diligently seeking the Lord, having those encounters. That's going to as he speaks to you and tells you who you are, uh, then that's identifying your uh, identity, determining, discovering your identity. But also, he puts you in relationships and in, in uh, connections uh, with people uh, mm -hmm. who will uh, change uh, your identity and your perception of who you are. And, and that was what happened uh, to me. The, 
the person on the earth that had the greatest impact in my life was my spiritual father, uh, Brother Bob Terrell. I sought a spiritual father. And you might say, well, I, I don't have a spiritual father. Well, you, do, you don't value it, a spiritual father like I value a spiritual father because I sought uh, a spiritual father and the Lord led, led us to a spiritual father. So that doesn't happen just by chance. It happens because you diligently seek the Lord and the things that God has for you. And part of the things that God has for you are going to come through spiritual fathers and through the spiritual relationships that you have. And if you don't have the, the spiritual relationships and you don't have a spiritual father, then you're going to be missing out on what God intended to come through those lives. So it's real important to have uh, spiritual relationships and they can redefine uh, who you are. And uh, a couple of things about Brother Bob. Uh, one thing that uh, by my connecting with him, he set me free from the religious system. I had Amen. a religious mindset. And uh, the, uh, Brother Bob and the people around them, around him that he had raised up, uh, they, they definitely put their finger on that in my life that I had a religious mindset. And, and I had to be free of it from the by the work of the Holy Spirit. And so that happened Amen. in my life. So that Hallelujah. was the, the greatest impact anybody has had on my life is what Brother Bob uh, imparted into me. Now, what I want you to see is that he never laid hands on me uh, to the best of my knowledge. I do not ever remember him laying his hands on me or imparting some spiritual gift but it was his life that was imparted to me. And that's what we're going to be talking mm -hmm. about today. Amen. It was his life and the life that he poured into other people uh, who continued to pour into my life. So it, it's those life experiences and those revelations that we have uh, from the Lord. Uh, and, and then we begin to impart that into the lives of other people. We begin mm -hmm. to impact their lives. Uh, see these uh, there are different kinds of impartations. We're going to go over this first of all, just a distinction. There are two broad categories of uh, impartations, and, and the first one are gifts, mm -hmm. and the other are rewards. Gifts are freely given by the Lord and freely received, and uh, we've all certainly received freely from the gifts of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Now, what kind of impartations could we be talking about there? Importing the Holy Spirit. You know, uh, Peter and John laid hands on the Samaritans and they received the infilling of the Holy Spirit. That's a, that's a free gift. Uh, you can also uh, lay hands on people. Uh, you can uh, see them uh, receive uh, them imparting a gift. Uh, for example, in uh, 1 Timothy 4.14, uh, Paul was writing to Timothy and said and talked about the gift uh, that was put, given to him by the laying on hands of the leadership of the presbytery. And then in uh, 2 Timothy 1, uh, verse 6, again, he talks about the gift that was in uh, Timothy because Paul had laid his hands on him and imparted a spiritual gift. Now we see Paul's desire in his heart to help uh, impart things into people's lives. Uh, we see it over and over again that he, he freely had received, he freely gave. Uh, and uh, what we see in Romans chapter 1 verse 11, he had never seen the Romans, but he said, I desire to come to you. I want to come to you to impart some spiritual gift to you uh, that you might be established. So he wanted to give what he had. Uh, see, a person who has received gifts then can impart those gifts into other people. Now, people can impart things into you that they don't have. So, so they've got to have it uh, in order to impart it to you. But So the first category then are gifts. And that's such things as the Holy Spirit, uh, the spiritual gifts, uh, endowments of grace, Mm -hmm. uh, those are all gifts, and, and those can be freely given, and that can be given in an instant uh, of time uh, mm -hmm. in an event. Uh, for example, Peter and uh, John laid hands on people. Right then, they received it. Sherry and I have 
laid hands on thousands of people around the world and they have received the gift of the Holy Spirit and they've received healings and they've received uh, all manner of uh, gifts from the Lord. Uh, and so th that's a part of uh, imparting. And so we're in the season of imparting and that's the reason I want to talk about imparting tonight. But there's another type of imparting and that's the imparting of rewards. Uh, and so I want to talk mm -hmm. about rewards and you may never have heard about this. Uh, but, I, but I want you to know that there is an impartation of rewards. So let's think about rewards for a minute. And rewards are different than gifts. Gifts you just receive. Mm -hmm. or, or rewards, there's a labor and there's a, uh, a, an, effort, a, a, an involved. effort involved uh, to receive a reward. Um, and God, see, Hebrews 11 verse 6 says that without faith, it's impossible to please God. And those that come to him must um, believe. must believe that he is, that he exists, and that he is a rewarder Order. of those who diligently seek him. So if you spend time diligently seeking the Lord in faith, he will reward you. What will he reward you with? Well, he will reward you with his presence. Yes, He'll amen. reward you with the gifts. He will reward you in, in, in many different ways. So uh, he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. He will reward you with a revelation uh, knowledge of mm -hmm. who uh, he is. And so I want to talk about uh, this uh, process of rewards uh, for a moment. A and the person I want to look at is David. Uh, when David was a, a, a young man, a uh, shepherd following the sheep, uh, then uh, Samuel said in 1 uh, Samuel uh, 13 that he, that he was going to anoint a man uh, who was after God's own heart. And so that was the reason he went over and anointed David to be king because he was after God's own heart. Now in Acts 20, verse 22, uh, we see what that means. Again, all through the Bible, it talks about David uh, was after God's own heart. So God was looking for people like David. God was looking, mm -hmm. has always been looking for people like David mm -hmm. uh, and, and whose hearts after God. And, and then that verse in Acts uh, 20, verse 22, talks about, I don't know, 13, Acts 13, verse 22, says that because he would do everything the Lord uh, asked him to do. That's what it means to be after God's own heart, a man after God's own heart. Okay, so God rewarded uh, David. Now, an interesting thing I want to say about David is David was interested in rewards. Uh, one time after he was anointed to be king, uh, he went over to uh, give some food to his brothers who were in uh, uh, King Saul's army. And uh, when he got there, they said, oh, who, who is this guy? There's a guy out there, Goliath, that he's challenging all of the people of Israel. He's challenging us uh, to come uh, have uh, combat with him. And, uh, and somebody told David, well, he, the king will reward whoever kills Goliath. He's going to reward him with great riches and let him marry his daughter and his family will be free from taxes in Israel. Okay. Well, that kind of perked up David's ears when he heard about <laughs> rewards. And so he said, well, what is this about rewards? And so another person said, well, uh, whoever kills Goliath, they get these rewards. The, uh, the king will give them great riches, uh, will let them marry his daughter, and his family will be free from taxes in Israel. Now, about that time, one of his brothers comes up and said, oh, you're talking about rewards. You're all interested in rewards. And so they mocked him. So if you find out, uh, if you find if you're interested in rewards, people will mock you. Your own brothers and sisters in Christ will mm -hmm. mock mm -hmm. you over it. But God said he was a rewarder. Hallelujah. Now, how can we how can we uh, balance those two things? He is a rewarder. Now, so here David had had heard it twice what the reward was, and he's a man after God's own heart. But he turned around and said, well, now, what's this reward? What's this about rewards? I, I'm hearing things about rewards. What is this? So, uh, so this third time he hears 
Well, the king is going to reward the person that kills Goliath. He's going to give him great riches, let him marry his daughter, and his family will be free from taxes. That really caught David's attention. And he went out there and he killed Goliath and he got the reward. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He was able to, to marry this uh, gorgeous girl, the, the daughter of uh, Saul, and uh, get great riches and his family was free. So his rewards was really on David's heart. And David was a man after God's own heart. Now, a little bit later in 2 Samuel 6, um, there was a, a man, Obed-Edom, that had the ark of the presence of God in his house, and he was really blessed with it. And so David got upset because he wanted those rewards of the presence of God. Hallelujah. <laughs> I'm talking about David today. Mm -hmm. That rewards motivated David. Mm -hmm. He said, I'm going to go down there and I'm going to get that ark because I want the rewards of having the I presence, want the presence of, God. of God. I want the presence of God in, in my mint, midst midst and uh and i see rewards there because obed edom was greatly blessed because the presence of god was there in his house and his family was blessed so it's okay to be like david yeah me. <laughs> david was a man after god's amen. own heart amen and he paid attention to rewards so what we're talking about tonight are rewards and so let's just think about some of the verses that uh in the New Testament that talk about rewards, uh, 1 Corinthians 3, 8 says, everyone is going to be rewarded according to his own labor. Mm -hmm. So what you do mm -hmm. for the Lord, diligently seek him, honor him, please him with your faith. He's going to reward you and, and you're going to get rewarded according to your efforts, according uh, to your labor. Now in verse 14 of the same chapter, 1 Corinthians 3, it says, that uh, uh, if your rewards are precious, like silver and gold, and they can go through the fire and you'll get a reward for that. Mm, mm, uh, Matthew mm, 6, mm. G uh, Jesus himself said, you, you do uh, acts of charity, you do it in secret and your father's going to reward, reward you, you openly. openly. Hallelujah. That's not way to mm -hmm. get away over there. It's openly. You're going to be rewarded. Uh, when you do things in secret to help other people. So there are rewards. That's the point I want to make. Now, let's listen to what um, Matthew 10, verse 41 said. He who receives a prophet, prophet. in the name, name of, of a, a prophet, prophet, receives a, a prophet's, prophet's reward. reward. This is the core scripture. This is the core scripture for this message today. There's going to be impartations. And I'm going to talk about those impartations. And it starts with a prophet, but then it goes on to a righteous person. If you receive a righteous person in the name of a righteous person, you receive the rewards of a righteous person. Okay. Mm -hmm. So what I'm going to talk about now is in, in general, and I'm say, going to say, Sherry is a prophet. She stands in the office of, of a prophet. She's a female uh, you, so you might want to call her a prophetess, and that's okay, but she stands in the office of a prophet, and she's a warring prophetess, warring prophetess. She's also a seer, and, and I'm just telling you some characteristics about her, and she has amazing love, and, and I've seen this all over the world and in very difficult situations. She has amazing love, and uh, uh, she is also a miracle worker, so there's some things about Sherry that I know because I've been around her uh, for a long, long time, okay? So I know that she has sought the Lord over her lifetime uh, for years and years, for decades that she's been seeking the Lord. And so what does she do uh, by seeking the Lord? She receives rewards. Now, what do you get out of that? Well, if you receive her for who she is, you get an impartation of her rewards. God's Amen. not stingy. God is extravagant. Amen. And, and, Amen. and there are enough rewards to go around. Now, a lot of people, uh, and, and of course, the other part was about a righteous person. And, and uh, so what I want you to see is that we are always imparting uh, into the lives of people. 
And that's what we do in these Zoom meetings. There's an impartation. There's an impartation every time we come together. Sometimes we're imparting gifts. Sometimes we're imparting rewards. Now you can receive them if you want to. And, and the reason for the message tonight is to make you aware of what goes on and mm -hmm. what our heart is. We're like uh, Paul. We want to equip people. We want to mature people. We want to give people the gifts and the impartations that they need to fulfill their purpose. That's the desire of our heart. That's the reason we have meetings like these. And we don't have meetings just with you. We have meetings with people all over the world, Zoom yeah, meetings right. with all over the world. Now, um, before the pandemic, we were uh, traveling all over the world and, and really helping raise up an army of God's mm -hmm. uh, ministers to go into all the nations. And yes, so amen. The, our heart's desire is to see people uh, equipped and trained uh, to do God's purpose so that they can fulfill destiny. And that's what we're doing in these meetings. Now, sometimes, and, and we talked in July, we talked about uh, the impartation of God's power, and we talked about gifts, uh, but tonight we're focusing on rewards. And so I really want to focus on that and talk about that. How do you get this impartation of rewards? And, and I go back to my spiritual father, uh, Brother Bob, and he was also Sherry's spiritual father, uh, and a lot of what we received from him uh, came in our discussions with him. Uh, it was not because he laid his hands on us and said, oh, receive this or receive that. It was just discussions. He, he would be in our house, and we would spend time together, or we would go to his meetings mm -hmm. and, and spend time with him and travel with him and, and do these different things. And that's where the impartation was. Okay, so the same thing happens uh, with us and with you, that as you're pouring into these meetings and we're pouring into these meetings, you can receive an impartation uh, from us. And it depends on how you see us. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of people mm -hmm. just see meetings and they just want to go from one meeting to another, people, uh, another meeting and, and uh, wanting somebody to tickle their ear. Uh, they may want to go from one meeting to another meeting to be in a religious uh, meeting, uh, but some people will see us for who we are and desire the uh, just the to lives, be with us to be with us and to be uh, uh, and to draw from us. And, and so that's what I encourage each of you to do is just to to be with us and to draw draw from us. Uh, so it's not about uh, us having to lay our hands on you. Like I said, I don't know that Brother Bob ever uh, laid his hands on me, but uh, it was just being with him, drawing from him, drawing from his life experiences, drawing from his revelation. Uh, see, he was an apostle, apostle for over 40 years uh, when, when basically nobody knew about apostles. Uh, he knew that uh, apostles worked with prophets, and so he knew one prophet when it started. Mm -hmm. See, this is 1957. God called him to be an mm -hmm. apostle to mm -hmm. the body of Christ, uh, not just an apostle over a local congregation, but an apostle to the body of Christ. So he was a real pioneer uh, in the apostolic ministry. And, and like I said, he knew one prophet, but he saw in the scriptures that apostles and prophets worked together. So he moved to a rural a little rural area in Texas to be with the one prophet he knew. And so that apostle and that prophet raised up many young mm, apostles mm. and prophets for years and sent them out. And so the people that we continue to relate to are, that, are those same people that Brother Bob poured into, poured his life, his revelation, his experiences into them. And they, have, they are continuing to pour into us and we're pouring out to other people. And so if you recognize us for who we are, see, if you receive a prophet in the name of a prophet, you receive the prophet's reward. And that's the importation of the rewards. Amen. And Amen. that's what we're doing tonight. And, and on September the 22nd, as we were uh, driving, uh, the Lord spoke to us and said, uh, this is the season of importation and be in uh, be imparting into the lives of people and let them know. Basically, let you need to know what we're doing. This is not just a, a, a meeting to tickle your ears, mm -hmm. uh, to give you some uh, fresh mm -hmm. revelation. It's, 
It's about an impartation, an impartation of who we are, of what God has poured into us, what other people have poured into us. See, we're not here alone. We, we've, we're standing on the shoulder of, of men and women who have gone before us mm -hmm. because we have, we have drawn from them. We, we have been interested in, in making connections with those people and receiving from them. We have been diligent in that and, and seeking the Lord. And most of my identity uh, has been what the Lord has spoken to me. And just myself, as I've been out in the woods praying and seeking him, which I, which I do, I try to do almost every day, spend time in the woods walking and uh, praying. And, and when he speaks to me, and I know his voice, sometimes Jesus speaks to me, and sometimes the Holy Spirit speaks to me, and sometimes the Father speaks to me. I know their voices. Uh, and when I hear those, that, that creates an identity. It's not just about assignments, but it's uh, many times they have spoken to me uh, and told me who I was. Now, there have been times that they've told me things uh, that I had no clue what they were talking about, but I continued diligently seeking uh, to find that out. And maybe in 10 or 20 years, I began to walk in what they had said years earlier because I heard and I heeded what was said to me. And, and uh, for example, Jesus told me to teach the riches of the kingdom. And that's mm -hmm. what I've been doing. I've been teaching the mysteries of the riches of God's kingdom. And so what, what you hear here is not the same thing you're going to hear everywhere else, uh, because these are what the Lord has revealed to me over my lifetime. And if you can receive it, then there will be an impartation. Amen. To you. Amen. But there'll be some people here tonight that, that will have no clue exactly what has happened here. Uh, they've just been in a meeting because it's a religious thing to do, or they've been here because they're just listening for something to tickle their ears, and they will miss the visitation of the Lord. Oh, but the visitation of the Lord is here. It's in, he's in these meetings. And I don't have to lay hands on you. Just our uh, communicating with one another, we are releasing things uh, into each other's lives. And that, that's what we're doing here tonight. It's an impartation. And if you receive it, you're receiving part of our rewards. And it's not a single event. See, if I lay my hands on you to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, to be filled with the Holy Spirit, that's just a, a, a moment in time and an event, and it happens. But the impartation that I'm talking about tonight is something that's in my life. It, it is an expression of my life, of my, of the revelation that God has given me, of the experiences, of the knowledge, of the relationships that I have. And that's what I pour into you uh, every time we have these meetings. Or if you come into my home or I meet you at a restaurant, uh, that's what I'm doing. I'm imparting things into you if you receive them. But you have to recognize. So you have to realize who we are. If you don't know who, we, if you just think we're our brother and sister in Christ, uh, then you miss the reward. It says if you receive a prophet uh, in the, uh, the name, name of a prophet, prophet you say, oh, she's a prophet. Well, I'm. Not, let me tell you, I'm not a prophet, but I am somebody in God's kingdom. And if you know who I am, then you receive my reward. Hallelujah. 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 And it's the same with them. It's the same. And so uh, this is a place, uh, uh, these Zoom meetings are a place where, yes, you can uh, practice your gifts and, and operate in your gifts. And we want you to do that. Uh, and you can be pouring into our lives uh, through what you share uh, with us. And if we recognize who you are, are and receive that, then we're receiving your rewards. Hallelujah. We, listen to me, we are intimately linked together yes. in God's kingdom. Woo, we're, not just, we're not just uh, floating down the stream mm -hmm. uh, independent one another. We are in, Intimate, intimately oh, shadow, linked yeah, together great. in yeah. God's kingdom. A and we can accelerate each other. And there's a multiplication going on here. If you receive the reward that God has for me, 
over my lifetime of diligently seeking him, if you receive that reward, you receive her reward, we receive your reward, then there's an acceleration That's in right. all of Amen. our lives. Amen. If we just come here and just want to have a religious experience, then we miss all of that. We miss the supernatural visitation yes, of our God. Shot out of but we need spirit. to recognize that there's something important going Hallelujah. on uh, every Hallelujah. time we get together. There's something supernatural uh, happening. And if we can recognize it and receive it, see, we need to know who is providing leadership for us. Know those who give you oversight. Know those who labor mm -hmm, among you. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and you might say, well, the, uh, Fred and Cherry are just brothers and sisters, and, and I just receive them as brothers and sisters. Then you receive a brothers and sisters reward. reward. But if you recognize mm -hmm. who we are in the body of Christ and in the kingdom of God, you'll receive the, the true reward, the, the, the greater reward. So you have to make a decision. How um, do you see yes. us? You just see us uh, uh, as uh, somebody to uh, to tickle your ear, or or somebody to uh, that um, might tell you something. You're looking for a prophetic word, and if you get that prophetic word, well, then you'll you'll just uh, hang on to it till the next prophetic word you get from somebody else. Hey, you don't miss the visitation of God. Oh, it's happening. It's happening all the time. Every time. We're with people. There's a visitation of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And it's Amen. happening tonight. Can you receive it's it? It's already stirring. It's, it's already all, stirring. Can you Hallelujah. receive it? It's going on right now. And yeah. I'm, I'm bringing the message to conclusion, but I want you to know this is a significant message for you if you can receive it, that, that you need to be seeking relationships. Yes. People that God has for you that will take you to a higher level that will open doors for you about your identity, yes. who you are. A gateway. See, see it, the identity is that gateway to your purpose and to authority. And I've built relationships. I've sought relationships that would take me to a higher level. And, and, and that's exactly what's happened. And, and we have, mm -hmm. we have fostered those relationships and, and many, many people and around the world, we have relationships and we receive from them and they receive from us. It's about the kingdom of God and the kingdom of God is built on relationships. It's not about membership in a local congregation. It's about relationships. It's not about religion. It's about relationships. Mm. The kingdom of God is about relationships. And if you uh, will follow the Holy Spirit and develop uh, the relationships and and really pour into those relationships and draw from those relationships that's going to take you to a higher level it's going to open it's going to open uh, your eyes to see who you really are and what i want you to know is, is that your identity is not static you are uh, you're discovering your identity is a dynamic process and if you think you know everything about you uh, then uh, and then you know exactly who you are and exactly what you're supposed to do and uh, well what why aren't you out there doing it no this is about a revelation of who you are and, and it's going to take some relationships it's going to take diligently seeking the lord himself but also about uh, relationships and who he has for you you see uh paul and barnabas in Acts chapter 13, they were prophets and teachers. Mm -hmm. uh, but then you had this small group. Now, it didn't have to be a big group. It was just a small group of, of, of prophets and teachers. And, and they were led by the Spirit of God. And they laid hands on uh, Paul and Barnabas, or, or Saul of Tarsus, but who was also known as Paul. And when they did that, they changed their identity from uh, prophets and teachers, they changed their identity to apostles with great authority. Ooh, it was yeah. by the people that were around them that were imparting into them and, and releasing them into the kingdom of God mm -hmm. work uh, that they were called to. And that from that time on, they were called apostles mm -hmm. and, and they had Hallelujah. great Hallelujah. Uh, power 
and you can uh, follow them and you'll see that they turned the world upside, upside down. down. Glory to God. But they didn't do it on their own. They had some relationships uh, that poured into their lives and, and, and called at strategic times, important times in their lives uh, to take them to a higher level. All right. Hallelujah. Sure. Hallelujah. I think about Elijah and about Elisha. Uh, that uh, they they walked together, and Elijah told uh, Eli Eli Elisha that if he stayed with him until he saw him go up, then he would receive that double portion. And and so um, Elijah stayed with him, and he walked with him until he saw him go up in the the fiery chariot and the mantle came back down uh, upon him. And he, he did twice the miracles uh, that Elijah did. And, and so I think about, you know, that was a, a good example of, of a relationship that redefined uh, his identity. And, uh, and if there, you know, I can, I can tell you times that I've gone and just sat with people, just watched people, um, you know, one person we lost uh, during this pandemic, but she was my spiritual mom from Honduras, Sister Eleanor Cooper. And, and I would go to Honduras. I would fly over there not to, to teach and preach in big meetings. I would just go to sit in her house and to watch her and to observe how she responded to people and, and treated people and, and to learn from her and to receive uh, from her, and and it was just a, a just wonderful uh, times uh, that that we had. And I, I think about Lester Summerall who went and and sat in the home of Smith Wigglesworth, and he would just go there and sit. And Smith Wigglesworth was not a he was not a chitty chatter, you know. He didn't he didn't go for uh, just uh, talk about you know, the weather and, and what's going on today and what's going on out there in the streets. And no, no, you didn't do that with Smith Wigglesworth. And, and, and Lester Summerall would go and, 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 and just be there, sit there with him. Um, and, and so there are times when the Lord may tell you, you know, this person, I want you to, I want you to shadow this person. I want you to uh, form a relationship with this person. I want you to uh, fly to wherever they live. And, you know, sometimes I think we're, um, the, the human being in us is restricted, but the spiritual being in us is not restricted. It's not restricted. It doesn't think about money. It doesn't think about time. It doesn't think about, well, you know, uh, what am I going to get out of this? You know, the spirit man says, you know, go and, and be, be with this person and, and, and take this person to lunch and talk to them and, and, um, and listen to them. Uh, there was a man in South Georgia, a prophet of, in South Georgia. And when we would, when Freddie was still at the university, he had faculty uh, down in South Georgia and we'd have to go there periodically. And we were, well, um, maybe we would meet uh, halfway probably 20 more miles yeah and we would meet halfway with this with this prophet and we would take our tablets and our pens and and we would meet in this restaurant but but I wasn't hungry at all all I wanted to to do was take take notes and write and and receive uh what he had and I believe that as we uh uh fellowship with him then we received uh, those rewards uh, that that he had, and uh, you know, over our lifetime, uh, we've met so many wonderful people, and and I think about all of you uh, that we have received from you, and um, and so we we thank you for that. Uh, but as we think about redefining our identity, you know, I'm I'm always evaluating. I'm always evaluating and saying, you know, what can I do better? What can I do that's more uh, powerful? You know, I want uh, to uh, do the things that God is telling me to do, but is there is there a different way of doing them? 
Is there a better way? I, I want to be strategic in using my time and my effort and my, uh, especially during my prayers. And so um, this is something I, we really want you to, to get down in your heart uh, tonight that if you see us um, as pastors, that's what we'll that's what we'll be to you. That's what we'll be, and that's what you'll receive. And if you see us as teachers, then that's what you're going to receive. If you see us uh, in a different way, then 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 you will receive those rewards. And freely we have received, and freely we give. Uh, to each one of you tonight. 